Good day and welcome to the Sport Rep Show. I am your host, Jesse Jackson Kauraitha, unpacking the latest review of the weekend. In today's show, we will take you through the weekend's highlights as our Commonwealth participants continue to perform well. That is in Birmingham. Sport Rep has rugby, futsal and volleyball interviews for you as well. Sport Rep has you covered. And now for your latest on the hit list. Football consultant Olsen Kahiri says it is important to have many Namibians playing outside Namibia as this contributes to the development of the game in Namibia. He has however noted that it is critical that these players obtain rep representation to protect their interest. He made the comments after successfully signing uh, the striker Betuel Mudeu to South African First Division club Black Leopards in a country that has not had an active league for four years, of which we do not foresee active football in the next four to six months, because we have not seen any blueprint, it is important for players to join clubs outside the country. These young players need to survive through their God-given talent, and that is why they have to find greener pastures somewhere, Kairiri said. Namibia has seen recent increase in Namibian footballers joining the Botswana Premier League. The country has also seen some of its players playing their trade in Ethiopia Premier League as well as Europe's lower football leagues. South Africa has also been a destination for many of Namibia's talents who have gone to represent clubs at the highest levels. Some players have also signed to clubs in Zambia and Mozambique where others experienced contract troubles in the past. That is why the labor consultant who has since turned into an agent feels the need for players to be well represented. Netball Namibia has announced the squad for the 2020 World Cup qualifiers to be held in South Africa, Pretoria, that's taking place on 2022, August. Well, the World Cup is next year in 2023. The squad names are Lisa Kruker, Yves Kamatushi, Anna Kaspar, Nelandra Moster, Tilly Kamati, Embileni Franz, Monica Gomases, Loite Hanyanya, Cornelia Mupenda, Mwale Mushamwase, Monique Besson, Emi Kutako, Luis Kasewa, Selma Bitla, and Sheripo Kambirongo. We will now visit the marketplace and after that, it will be the weekend drop. Stay tuned. The Regional Review brings you news, views and interviews from NMH correspondents from across the country. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact regional at Synergy. Namibia's Hilalia Johanna says the future depends on the reaction of her body after scooping a bronze medal in the women's marathon at the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham, England. The 2022 Commonwealth Games bronze medalist Hilalia Johannes will decide on her future after consulting with her coach Robert Kukawena. I would like to thank God for giving me this opportunity to compete and to be able to win a bronze medal for my country. Right now, after this, I will have to listen to my body and also sit with my coach to plan for the future, Johannes said. Johannes won Namibia's first medal of the Games after finishing third in a time of 2 hours, 28 minutes and 39 seconds. Great Britain's Jessica Stenson won, took the gold medal, while Kenya's Mar Margaret Mariuki took the silver medal in an intense race. Other, th other marathon results saw Thomas Reynolds finishing 13th in a time of 2 hours, 24 minutes and 30 seconds, while Divan Duploy was 25th with 56 minutes, 24 seconds in his men's triathlon event. The triathlon women individual results saw Imke Yako finishing 29th within a time of 1 hour, 6 minutes and 12 seconds, while Henri Krugel finished 27th within a time of 1 hour, 5 minutes and 56 seconds, while Ronan Vantara, Ronan Vantara was 
the fourth in his 100 meter breaststroke heat clocking 1 minute 03 seconds while on Saturday. So Alexander Skinner on the other hand was seventh clocking 50 minutes and 40 seconds in the men's 100 meter freestyle that is 50 seconds and with 40. Johannes through was also through to the quarterfinals of this one. That was Jonas Juniors who yesterday advanced in the lightweight welterweight division after beating Rashield Williams of the Bahamas 5-0 in the round of 16. This is what Johannes had to tell reporters at the scene. Congratulations. Well, job well done. First medal for Team Namibia is always you bring them in. So far, please run us through the race. So the event itself was not easy. There's a lot of corners and it's really cold, but I will find the name of all for accomplishing events in the great position. I'm very much grateful. Okay, and looking at it, you were uh, with the lead group until almost up the hill. What went wrong? You looked like you were in pain. Yeah, I was having speech, then I, I decided to drop the, uh, the pace, then I got to my own pace that I can get okay but uh, the two of you guys starting the race uh, did you have a plan on how you are going to work uh, uh, you and alina yes i was very much happy that uh, the pace was not going uh, hard from the beginning because i know that my colleagues is also in the group then i have been uh, observing whether she is still there then i was very much happy to see him Okay, and Alina, from your side, uh, you finished seventh. How is this result for you? First, I want to thank you to my God. That is a beautiful weather. And second, I want to have to very much happy to my colleague. She, she always brings us medals, and I'm very much happy to her. She, she, she seriously, she, she, uh, she helped me too much from uh, one kilo up to 25, if I'm not mistaken. I yeah. think myself from there, I know she, I will make it because she left me behind almost maybe 17 kilo to push And I'm very much happy to be number seven. It's not easy. Yeah. And that was my best event. Okay. And, and uh, so far for yourself, other competitions that you are looking forward to, apart from the Commonwealth, uh, Helalia? Yeah, it will depend on uh, the reaction for uh, who was my body after this event. And uh, I don't know why there's a plan ahead. I will go and sit and listen to my body uh, for the plan. That's oh. next for me. Okay. So, yeah. But thank you very much for bringing the first medal home. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Swako Moon Football Club were crowned champions of the Ongos Valley Winter Cup after beating Quality FC in the final. Futsal Namibia founder Andre Tirtirao has expressed gratitude towards everyone that made the Ongos Valley tournament a success. The tournament took place this weekend at the Winduk Show grounds with Swako Moon Futsal Club beating Quality FC that is seven goals to five in the final. Swako Moon FC received a check of 5,000 for winning the Futsal Winter Cup. The tournament saw 22 teams competing for the top prize in an electric atmosphere at the Windhoek Showgrounds. The Galacticos finished third, while Devon Demancy won the Shield competition. Ongos Valley came in second place of the Shield Cup, while Alas Zuzman took third spot. Andre Titrao has more of this. It is a very great atmosphere here at the Windhoek Showgrounds. Um, indeed, a special location. We have seen special matches today. Um, a wonderful tournament. Will you say this tournament was a success? Definitely. This, uh, this cup uh, sponsored by Ongos Valley, uh, which is right behind me here, has really been a success. We managed to, to, to sell out all the spots, 22 teams, in about two days. So the interest was there. The atmosphere for the past couple of days uh, today has been tremendous. Um, the teams have showed up. There's a lot of team spirit, a lot of really cool fans, lots of noise, and very good futsal. So that's a good sign. Yes. Um we saw the, 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 the express credit tournament that took place and now we are seeing another tournament of, from Ongos Valley. Yes. Um, so has the interest been growing here in the sport? Definitely. So, so this is a, a cup in between the two leagues. So the express credit uh, winter league which, which ended. Uh, there's, there's about a month and a half break. So this gave the, a chance to new teams but also teams that are in the current league to be able to just play uh, you know, really fast and, and really challenge themselves against other teams. Okay, so what are we looking forward to for the season itself? Um, I mean, when the league starts? 
So we've had so much interest. Uh, I, I think uh, I think we're going to reach about eight nine hundred players uh, that will join our our summer league, which start in, uh, starts end of August. Uh, we have sixteen Premier League teams. We're, we're, we're going to have thirty two teams in the first division. We're going to have uh, an under seventeen ladies and male division, and of course the ladies first division, which will now be ten teams. Okay. Um, have you got a sponsor for that? Express Credit has committed to, to being a sponsor for that as well. Uh, we are constantly looking for for uh, uh, more sponsorship. We are looking to start an academy. So there's a lot of there's a lot of moving uh, elements to the to the equation. Okay. Since the last time we've spoken, um, I can hear the numbers are just increasing in terms of the interest. Um, what do you think has been the major drive to watch this? I think. I, I, the, the common denominator amongst uh, amongst everybody that talks about futsal is the fact that it's a league that's really well organized. Uh, it's it's a league that gives a chance to players to, to to play football, to play futsal, to really be exposed to the real futsal rules, and and be part of a structure that that we're very uh, very strict about. Okay, how much did the teams today take the winners? Uh, the first place of the cup takes five thousand uh, dollars. Second place uh, three thousand, and, and third place two thousand. Uh, we have prizes for top goal scorer, uh, best goalie of, this, of, the, of the cup. Uh, we also have an exhibition match that's uh, that's that, that's coming up for the ladies from the first division. Uh, so so there's a lot of things happening. Happening, really uh -huh. cool entertainment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Andre. Thank you. Out there was the Galacticos in action. Well, as you can see, very, very tough competition they had um, in a very, very big, big competition against Swakop Mund. Swakop Mund were the winners on the day. But as you can see, Swakop Mund was showing that they are capable of keeping the ball and possession play there. Wonderful skills displayed from the Swakop Mund team that eventually became the champions of the competition against Galacticos. Galactico player there pushing onto the right side. Very, very wonderful display of skills from the players. And the fans quite excited about the competition that is the 2022 Futsal Ongos Valley Winter Cup. More action there great control of the ball. It's a game of skills. A game of skills from all sets of players. With Swakob Mund showing why they eventually became the champions. Good with possession. That was indeed a very, very um, epic, epic competition that the Ongos Valley Winter Cup brought for us. That is Futsal Namibia developing into a master class of a league as well. They have their um, summer league that is also coming up towards the end of August. F and B, well, we have now as well the vo the volleyball which is taking place. That is at the Israel Patrick Iambo. It has been a very important um, tournament and league that is almost coming to its end. We have a NAST player um, that is David Katoma who has more to say about NAST match that they played against the NDF. They lost that match 3-1. Well, it was not to be for Nast. Um, last weekend you guys were on fire, but um, today losing 3-1, that is to NDF. What did you make of the game? Um, oh, it was quite a tough game for us. Um, I don't know what my guys did yesterday. <laughs> it was really, they were not on their top notch as usual. You know? uh, we didn't play well today, but we keep pushing, we keep pushing, we train hard, we come back strong. Okay, we come back strong. Well, um, was it so you say was it about tactics today or was it um the preparations before the match oh, it was about tactics mm -hmm. um our tactics was were, were off because um we have a tactic we have a game plan mm -hmm. but if people are not playing according to our game plan it means they're not going to play our not, yes um so um well currently it means that your position on the table is also not quite improving so what does this mean for you guys going forward uh, we just need to push, we need to push, because uh, we are positioned, we are third, third last or fourth last, yeah, mm. we are fourth last. Mm. 
So we need to push next year. We're coming back strong. We have two more games, mm. and we'll make sure we are going to win these two more games. Okay, yes, um, it is indeed one of the last few games of the season. And as a team, what have you made of the season for, for the team? You guys, I don't understand. I think you guys didn't play a lot of games. Um, yeah, you didn't play a lot of games. And the thing is, uh, with NAS, the, the students go for internships outside window. Mm -hmm. So next day, we might have new players again, and then we have to train them. So it's really hard for us. And the other teams, the players are working in window. They are always together for years. But if we stay for years together, we'll beat uh, teams next year. OK, um, so are you planning on bringing in on board new players probably next season, or is this um, are you planning on building on this team that you you guys have currently? No, I would prefer building on this team because it's quite an improvement um, uh, according to last year. This was not our improvement. Last year we came last in the league. But to at least this year we came, uh, for, we are fourth last. So this is a very, very big imp improvement. And I'm working to keep working with these guys because if we, the more we work together, the more you get to know each other and we'll beat teams next season. Mm -hmm. Last week, um, we mentioned about how important this whole volleyball season has been. And we are reaching almost, um, obviously, the most important phases now that teams are challenging with. But what have you made of the whole season in general in terms of the support and all? Um, volleyball is really a great sport, as I say. Um, us playing volleyball is saving us from a lot of unnecessary things. Some kids come from different backgrounds, and if they stay home, they might get um, um, thoughts of going to steal somewhere or doing anything. Yeah. But the moment the person is coming to volleyball, enjoy the game, you go home happy, it's life, we move on. Thank you so much, and good luck towards um, the last few games and next season. Thank you so much. Now, that was a game that is between NAST and NDF ladies, as you can see there. Um, the Nasta ladies in white strips and then the NDF ladies in blue. Um, that is at the Israel Patrick Yambo Police College. NDF lady spiking the ball there. Nasta in position. It is back in position of NDF and then well, well defended that was by Nast. Back in position with that is well defended again by Nas, but NDF managed to get that one there, celebrating. As you can see, Nas number 15 player Dorothy Nambaho, who is also the coach for the Nas men's team. She is the assistant coach and the vice chairperson of that is Namibia Central Volleyball League. She was in action there. These are some experienced players and again NDF dominating that one there so it was indeed a very special occasion for them there well FNB University of Namibia UNAM outclassed bottom of the lock FNB Rio Falcon on Saturday with a runaway 88 to 7 win UNAM consolidated their third position of the league standings, running into 13 tries to just one by the visitors. In other matches, FNB Western Suburbs made convincing comeback after the previous weekend's loss to FNB Wanderers, beating 31-17 at the Hagegain Cop Stadium. Grotfontein challenge for a top four spot came up short despite leading 7-5 at halftime as Comasdal team took in over the second half. At the coast, FNB Kudu won pocketed a 22-15 win against Wanderers. The host managed to score three tries, two conversions, and a penalty in a hard-hitting adrenaline-fueled game. We have some of that is the table there for you. As you can see, Kudu's in the lead. It looks like it is going to be an historic finish that is from the team from the coast. They have been wondering when are they going to bring the gl glory days that is at the Kudus um, Valfors Bay. But they are now on a brink of bringing that. However, you can see F&B Wanderers are just there lingering in second position, just four points behind and Western Suburbs um, in fourth. While you can see also UNAM, um, some of the teams that have always been dominating this league in third position there. 
We have some highlights prepared for you. Sit back, enjoy. John Wilkins Stadium, where Wanderers came out, uh, they were undefeated and they played against Kudus that were in the second place. The match was, was well orchestrated. In the first half, you could see that uh, the Kudu uh, guys, they had a lot of steam, but later on they ran out uh, a, a lot of steam and Wanderers came uh, on top and they won the match by 23 points to 12. As we look at the highlights now, we're going to see that Wanderers were well structured in the first half. Kudus was playing like a house on fire, uh, scoring two quick tries. But later on, Wanderers came back and they scored. They scored a try was scored there by one of the Kudu players, uh, Jared Kunan, which was well orchestrated and. The Seder Notes attempt uh, at the polls, but unfortunately missed. Wanderers fought back, and the halftime score Wanderers lead 13 points to 12. After halftime, Wanderers came back with some reinforcements, and the reinforcements were just too good. As they played on, Wanderers scored a couple of tries, brilliant moves there. And they scored another try and they won the game. By the end of the day, they won it comfortably by 23 points to 12. Wanderers were always on control. Wanderers never looked back as they kept on giving Kudus headaches with everything. De eerste 20, 30 minuten was ons redder van die hardste rugby van die seizoen. Maar ek denk die boys het er erg by mekaar gekom. Stiek stuur jou kans, ek doet ons het eer gekryk. En gee een band toe hier vanaf vir julle. Maar vir ons van nou af is het ons breed voor het toewerk. Elke game is een stap, een stap naar die final toe. Dit is ons mikpunt, dit is 3 september, hy proep hier in die middel van ons cirkel. Nou die groot kanon aan nou opdruk. Then we start with the Premier League, where Kudus is on top of the lock and they face off their main rivals, Wanderers. Only one point separate these two giants in Namibian rugby and it was uh, a party that everybody would like to, to see what is going to happen at this party. During the first half, Kudus took control of this game. Uh, but wonders they came back and yeah let's have a, a quick look at at what wonders did it was actually a skew kick uh, by aurelio and then the ball just bounced good for him little grabber through and a beautiful try scored by aurelio plato well done to aurelio for scoring that try but uh, but of individual uh, brilliance and, and kudos way in front 12 points to none against Wanderers 1. Then Wanderers came back with with their mini moves and Wanderers were on the front foot doing the extras but then the brilliance of that guy um, Lloyd again. He was again uh, the, the guy separating the team the one from the other like he did in the, in the first match and he scored intercept and scored under the poles and Kudus were comfortably at 19 points to zero. The second half it was something else. Wanderers came back and they fought hard and they throw 
throw everything at Kudus and a well deserved try there by Wondrous. And Wondrous made the mains of, of every uh, um, thing that they could do. And yes, Wondrous went over there in the corner and scored a try. Prove he set off for the conversion and the missed and the final score 22 points to 15. We blow on per captain. How can it? Right, we're still picking more. How was the reverse trick feel? Young is fired up the best. Once we had one, there's more common with a with a bang and there's a bit of a in the first term. But they're not very much common with you. Say for me, what shall you grab for this car? I will say. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming to support. We're going to get it by you. It's like a little bit of a stir. Who's fun, Matt? Yo, thank you, thank you. You're the label of this car. We're going to get it. You're the most furry. Grootste gedeelte van die tweede helft, zonder jullie kapitein klaar komen. Wat wat is hier de koppen gegaan uit? Dus we weten dat we niet niks foto houden, niet compost houden, niet werk om elkaar eens af. Wat zou je zeggen was jullie succesrecepje voor jullie wedstrijd? Ik denk dat we het samen gestik, dat we alles gewerkt. We zien elkaar niet te snel. Als dat foto's zijn, dat het gewerkt. Heel goed, heel goed. Ik denk dat dat jou. Wat zou je voor anderen zo zeggen? Jo, dank je wel dat jullie een goede game voor ons hebben. We gaan krijgen dat ik kan weer. Bij je, bij je, dank je. Okay, so with us the captain of uh, Western Suburbs, Gino Wilson, you just beat uh, Grootfontein. Um, so you had a knock against the head early in the match. Um, tell us a bit about that. Um, uh, it was in the first, like in the first minutes of the game, um, the first thing I thought like going to try and knocking my head was like a concussion in the first minute. I was like, I cannot be concussed right now because like, this is a big game for us uh, and we need everybody. So to make a substitution in the first half would obviously put us on the back foot, uh, but luckily I was fine. It was just a, a knock against the head. Okay, so you scored five tries today, um, so you got a bonus point. Um, so what are your thoughts on, the, on today's match? Um, uh, um, on the points, on the bonus point, uh, we actually need every point from this game because um, the title race, or not the title race, but the, the, the places for playoffs, uh, it's, it's going to be really tight, so every point will matter. So in order for us to play, we need like every single point. And the performance, what do you say about that? Um, I would just like to say, it. first of all, thank you to Hoventen for travelling this far and uh, playing us. Um, to my boys, um, we know what we did good, what we did bad and what we need to work on. So, obviously, just back to drawing board on Monday and uh, be ready for the game on Saturday against Rebot. Okay, so big game coming up. So, much better performance uh, than uh, the previous week against Wanderers. Um, yeah. So, we, you, <laughs> you feel it put you, put you back, back in contention? Uh, Confidence-wise, yeah. Uh, so definitely, the first thing you wanna do um, after such a huge loss uh, is obviously just to win, um, just to get uh, back on track. And uh, that's actually also one of the two or die games for us um, because Fortuna is just also behind us. If they won, they would have been uh, back in the play of contention. Um, so this was a do or die, do or die for us. Um, so we knew what we, we knew exactly what they needed to do against Fortuna. Um, and lucky for us, uh, with all our skill and everything, we pulled it off. I say, well done. Thank you, Puma. Right. So with us we have uh, Vikas Jacobs, the captain of uh, Grootfontein. So you just lost this match against um, against Western Suburbs. Um, so uh, your thoughts on the game? Uh, Andrew, uh, first of all I would like to say thanks for Kudus. Uh, yeah, thanks for uh, Western Suburbs. Uh, they gave us a very, very tough game. We were in the game less around about until the 60th minute. Uh, like I said previously, lack of concentration and a bit of unfitness cost us the game at the end. Okay, you've had some injuries this, uh, this season. Um, maybe not your best performance today. How, how do you feel about? Yeah, like I said, today? like I said previously, it's a, it's just another excuse. Uh, unfortunately, this year we got a, we suffered a lot of injuries, uh, and that caused the, the 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 core of the squad to be thinned out as well. But uh, it's back to the drawing board next week. Good is at home, and we're gonna fight until the end. I say, good luck. Thank Thanks. You. The fourth leg of the Namibian National Long Track Championship on Saturday at the Tony Russ Racetrack provided exciting races between Richard Slamet, Mark Sternagel and Alan Martin in the supercar division. Although Martin experienced a tense moment on 25 June during the third leg at the same venue when the brakes of his Golf 5 failed at top speed, he was back on the track over the week weekend at the time he tried to slow before a sharp left turn but his brakes had failed 
and he had to supply the handbrake his, on his Golf 5, which hit the tire quadrail, flew through the air, spun several times and came to rest outside the track. The end result was an unconscious Martin, a broken rib, several bruises and out of, out of action for a while. But however, he bounced back this weekend and he was in action. This, the results for this one was the supercar was born by Slamet Sternagel and Martin, while the clubman class B was Michael Rust, class D was Ewald Bischoff, Wayne Rust, Michael Stradom, class X, Heinosh Bischoff. We have now Sternagel on for the race. Mark, uh, Stenagel, you're back on track. Uh, your next race in motocross is next weekend at Galena. But in the meantime, you've done some long course racing. And today, yeah, at Tony Rust, you did well again. Um, you're looking forward to motocross again? Uh, yes, definitely. It'll be uh, almost a year since my injury. And it'll be my first race back after the injury. So definitely very excited to be back on on the motorbike and uh, racing again with everyone. Mark, you got injured last year, August, it in welcome with a freak accident. Tell us about that, please. Uh, yes, I was in Malcolm Racing in South Africa. Um, in the first heat, I think lap three or four, I had a very silly crash, actually. Um, and then I broke my right femur, uh, left shoulder and collarbone. Uh, was operated the next morning in Malcolm, and then they uh, kept me in hospital for the week. Uh, I, was flew, I was flown back to um, Bantuk uh, that Friday. And uh, yes, it was a long recovery. I was about two months in the wheelchair and uh, struggled with biokinetics. And then the, uh, my leg didn't want to grow. And then I had another operation on my shoulder. And uh, yes, so it's been a, a long while, uh, a long road to get back onto the bike, but definitely worth it. But I assume very fr frustrating as well. Uh, yes, very frustrating because I wanted to be on the bike already by two weeks after the accident. And then, uh, yeah, it took a while for me to realize that I'll be out for longer than expected. Uh, so, Mark, uh, we invite all people next week to Galina for, the, for your first race. And you've been uh, the Namibian champion uh, numerous times in the past. Uh, it's been a while, but uh, this will be your, your first race and you're looking forward to it as well, Nick. In what class are you going to race? Uh, I'll be racing MX Open and then King of the Dirt. King of the Dirt as well. Uh, uh, Mark, today here at Tenerest, um, uh, I can't say you really f that you were really flying. It was more than flying with that BMW. How did the, wins, uh, the race went and so on? Uh, it was a very successful day. Um, I managed to beat my track record uh, that I had. I drove a 63.7 and then he to a 63.5. Um, that's international rec track, uh, rec uh, track record now for me and for the track. And uh, it was very successful. He too, I accidentally or sadly got a left rear puncture, but um, we fixed that and then uh, he three I won again. So it was all in all a successful day. Yeah, I saw you lumping past us there at the, at the top <laughs> with, with that flat tire. But Mark, thank you very much and uh, good luck with your, your, your future races and the career and so on. Thank you very much. Okay, that's a wrap here at Tony Rest today. Uh, after a sex successful day of racing that uh, Mark Sternberg, Sternurgel, uh, over, overpowered everybody in his BMW. Next week he will be seen at Galena Motocross. Uh, his first race of the season and almost after a year that he suffered that horrendous accident. Well, that was Tilman van Liel who had compiled that for us. You can see he's a man who loves speed and adrenaline. Well, Brian Munango is on after the break. Stay tuned. Namibia's hospitality is as vibrant as its people. Join the Watts Cooking team as they travel the country cooking, chatting, and celebrating local personalities and the joy of food. If you think you have a standout offering, whether it's a restaurant, bar, pop-up event, or bride stand, get in touch with the What's Cooking team at cooking at synergy.com.na and we will be there to show the world what's cooking.
programs air every Friday at 4 p.m. on all the NMH Facebook platforms, as well as on NTV, DSTV Channel 285, and Go TV Channel 94 at 9 p.m. Straight Talk is a debate competition for high school learners and a spelling competition for primary school learners, mostly focusing on current affairs among the youth. Contact Zone at Synergy.com.na to share your products and services. Straight Talk. Don't raise your voice, improve your argument. Thank you very much, Jesse, and good day, viewers. My name is Brian Munango, and here on Spotify, so we focus on what the youth are busy with in sports. A very exciting weekend we had as the Namibian uh, Secondary School Rugby League is continuing. This past week, Afrikaans Private School battled out with Dr. Lemmet at the uh, Afis Park, uh, and they took on each other away. Afis uh, claimed the victory with 38 points to three. Dr. Lemma came out strong, but the Afis Park boys Prove to be too strong. Stay tuned for the highlights. Let's have a look at the highlights of the rugby game between Findok Afrikaans Preferred School and Dr. Lemma at Afis Park. Saturday, 30 July. It was a beautiful, beautiful space because of, well, the sun the wind, the place, the audience, everybody here was here for some good old rugby. And good old rugby was played. Vap showing some dominance from the beginning of the game. Playing through their phases, trusting their forwards to take them across the line. And this was one of those moments. Beautiful, emphatic try from Vindu Afrikaans before school putting the first points on the board. Berger, the man tossed with converting. Did not have any issues converting at that point in time. Vap playing the ball down the line very well. And this was one of those beautiful, gorgeous runs by Trump. He got clipped a little bit. That wasn't enough to stop him. He showed consistency, showed strength, keep, kept pumping those legs rather, and got eventually across the try line. Dr. Lemmer, this was their opportunity to put some points on the board. Three points there coming from Solomons. Those would end up being their only points scored in this game. From this point onwards and perhaps from before that, it was a VAP affair. That was half time. Looking at the second half, Vap once again showing some consistency. And this was a beautiful, beautiful dummy try by the other Trump brother, showing a lot of pace. Wow, these boys really pumped their legs and Vap was playing through their phases and their phases were paying off, trusting the forwards when they needed to, trusting the line when they needed to. And this was one of those times they trusted the line, they trusted in the overlap and Vap made sure that they got well across the line. asserting their dominance these were the 2019 champions after all there was no ssr in ssr rugby this was one of the more difficult kicks for burger but it wasn't difficult enough to stop him from converting NSSR wasn't played in 2020 and 2021 this is the resumption of the league and vap is saying they are still here and this time it was this beautiful beautiful play showing consistency getting across the line with energy with poise. Beautiful rugby from Vinduk Afrikaans before school. Berger once again stepping up to kick. This kick, however, not going quite as well as you'd have wanted it to. And Vap kept the pressure, kept the consistency. And this time, it was the captain, Van Veek, making sure that he got a share of the spoils. 
scoring that try and taking the scoreline all the way up to 43. As we said, right up until the final whistle, Vap kept on playing with consistency. And this was one of those tries that paid off rather, which was a payoff of their consistency throughout this game. And that was your final score. 43 Vinduka Afrikaans Prefar School, Dr. Lemma, three points. Well, the Super League champions, uh, defending champions showed to be way too strong with some beautiful layoffs. We had a few other results during the weekend. Uh, look at, as we look at the log, as you guys can see, VAP uh, put on a brilliant performance and won against Dr. Lemmer. Moria also put in a great performance in Ocho as they tried to get a win against Vendor Gymnasium, but Vendor Gymnasium proved a little bit too strong there. Pro Ed uh, was the shock of the week as they won Valves by Private High School by two points at their home ground. And with that, we still have uh, rugby that's coming to you Wednesdays and Saturdays, so you guys should stay tuned for the Super League. With that, we move over to international news with Ari Ohad. Stay tuned. Good day everyone, time for international sports news and starting off with the Commonwealth Games that is uh, still the biggest uh, focus on international sports uh, and it's taking place in Birmingham in England at the moment Australia doing the best uh, they've got 52 uh, medals at the moment uh, 22 gold and uh, England is behind them the host 34 medals 11 gold South Africa in ninth position with six medals of which four is gold and uh, Namibia in 23rd position with one bronze that was in the women's um, marathon with uh, Johannes taking bronze in that race. So uh, let's look at some of the results uh, or talk to some of the Namibian uh, athletes as well or listen to what they've said. Uh, firstly, it is boxing. It is Jonas uh, Junius uh, that is one of the favorites in that is the light welterweight uh, weight class and uh, he did well in the round of 16. He's through to the quarterfinals and he will face their Scotland's Rhys Lynch and that will be on Wednesday. But uh, let's uh, listen to what uh, Junius had to say after his bout. What a win. Uh, so far, run us through the win. You are through to the quarterfinals of the competition. How was the fight for you? You said that's quite well. It was a test. It was a sexual test. Uh -huh. but, um, I was under the weather and I fought under the weather three rounds. I feel like my chest is open now and I can do everything to the best of my abilities. Okay. And I think it's about to be going Sure. Okay, looking into the second round, it looked like the guy was coming in. But the third round, you managed to control the fight. Uh, wh what was going on in the second round? The second round was actually my legs, so I did not move properly, so it was all about my legs. We were feeling tight, so I could not move as much as I could. So far you said the gold is coming home and you are 100% uh, sure you of need who? another 100% on top of <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. That is uh, Jonas Junius, very uh, confident that uh, he will be in the medals and hopefully win gold for Namibia Wednesday. A big fight for him against, uh, like I said, the Scotland's Rhys Linz. Also in the swimming, uh, it was uh, Zander Skinner that uh, did well in the 100 meters freestyle. He went through to the semi-final, unfortunately couldn't reach the final. A uh, good time of 50.06 for him. Uh, studying in the USA, lots of experience he's gaining there. And uh, let's uh, hear what he had to say after his race. Alex, we have just come to the, that is uh, the semi-finals, uh, you just finished swimming, where you did your personal best. So far, run us through today, you had the hits, where you qualified to the semis, and now on the semis, how was the race for you? It was a bit of a roller coaster today, I would say, like emotion-wise, so uh, got um, at the end of my race this morning, not sure if I was going to make it, so kind of standing right outside of the pool, thinking, am I going to make it? So, uh, six my emotions immediately went out, got excited for the, for the afternoon. Came back this afternoon, did my usual warm up, was a lot more calm, was kind of calm and collected, rested, felt good. Um, sitting in the courtroom with uh, people like Carl Chalmers and Tom Dean, it's just it's an absolute privilege for me watching Carl Chalmers break the record, the Commonwealth Games record. 
knowing I was in the heat, I competed with them. So they're pretty one of the best moments of my life as, a, as an athlete. No, but what does what does that mean? Does that encourage you to uh, to push yourself uh, harder going forward? The singers in the same heat that you were, the Commonwealth game record was broken. Yes, this definitely pushes me, makes me realize there's uh, so much more I can do personally. Um, in swimming and just gives me a reason to work harder every day. Okay, um, but looking at it that now the Commonwealth has, uh, your participation at the Commonwealth Games came to an end today. Are there other plans you are looking forward to and uh, with Paris 2024 coming up, what schedule have you set up for yourself? So right now I'm just going to go home for about five, six days, going to join a video with my, with my family. Then back to America, then I have a November World Cup in, um, in America actually. Uh, short course goals in December, so that's kind of my short term plan for right now for the next six months and then uh, work hard for Paris. I'm definitely excited to uh, represent them in Paris. But in Paris, uh, would you only be doing freestyle or you want to qualify for how many events do you want to qualify for? I personally like to qualify for four events uh, 50, 100, and 200 freestyle as well as uh, 50 meter butterfly. It's definitely uh, my butterfly has been picking up, so I'm, I'm excited to race a little bit more different events now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ari, we had to cut him short there because um, we pressed for time. A sevens master class by the Springbok Seven side allowed them to claim a gold medal at the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham on Sunday night as they swept aside Fiji 31-7. It was also an important one for the international news day. That is all we had for you today. Catch us again live. That is on Monday, tomorrow, same time, same place. Goodbye.